Hi everybody, it's Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art and today I'm going to be opening up my Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India Ink. This is set number two. I'll leave the link below if you're interested in this and I'm going to start to play with these colors. It comes with this little informational page on painting with Bombay India Ink. Uses include watercolor, calligraphy pens, airbrush, pens technical illustration designing and that it is light fast and archival waterproof it's a fine art pigment acid free and non-toxic I already have some of these in black white gold I'll show you some of the things that I've done with those and then I just want to get in here and play with these let me see what I can do with these one of the things I liked about this set was that the bottles not only come lying down with that cover so that you can put them away fairly easily but they all stand up in their little spots so that you can just spin things around and grab the color there's also these wells in here so that you can add a little water and your inks one drop at a time and just have one well for each color which I think would be helpful if you were doing some serious writing or calligraphy because it's kind of a pain in the neck to dip your pen into the ink and not be able to see how far it's going. So some of the things that I've done with this set. First I created this chart, this color chart, this swatch chart and put out all of the colors so that I could really see the difference in the tones. There is a little bit of a sheen to some of them. The orange doesn't seem to have that much of a sheen the terracotta, Van Dyke Brown, and sepia do not seem to have much sheen. But there is a little bit of shellac in all of these inks, as they are inks, so be careful what brushes you use. They really don't smell that much. You have a very slight odor when you open them. The first thing I wanted to do was to just play around and create something that utilized many of the colors and I wanted to see them laid out. I'm not finished here. You can see there's this white spot over here where I'm going to come back and put a lamp. These two cars and this right here are the Heartfelt Creations Young at Heart stamp sets. comes from those collections. But the rest of it I just penciled in with a ruler, made the different layers. And although this is not coordinated in a gorgeous piece of artwork, uh, it did permit me to find out how opaque um, these inks were and how they acted when they were mixed with water versus when they were uh, put on straight without any interference from any other medium. A little bit of ink etching over it so it, it took the ink and the mix with the watercolor. You can see I could create watercolor effects by mixing it with the water. Where up here I went pretty much straight on with the color. Days on worked really well didn't interact with the inks or the water and so I was able to use these inks with stamps so anyway that's my little whatever town it is so next I stamped out some of Singing in the Rain from Heartfelt Creation stamps those are the newest ones and then I went to coloring now with this one I wanted to stick with mostly pinks and purples there is not a pink and purple in the ink set but with some mixing I was able to create some lovely purples and some light and dark with the red violet and some very light pinks by watering it down and so there are the boots and I'll show you a finished project with these on a separate heartfelt creations video but these are all set up for me to create with. I had fun painting these and I'm looking forward to cutting them out. This one was actually the first one that I did and this is a much more rainbow effect and this was with embossing so that's why that's very thick because I wanted to see what it would be like to use some embossing. Maybe you can see that on there. It came out pretty neat. I'm definitely going to be using these and I like the pop of color so Comparatively speaking, this was my second time out. This was my first time using them. You do need to be careful, uh, just like you would watercolors and many other mediums, not to paint a 
another color next to a wet color. So you have to let things dry before you move on. Now some other things that you can do with these inks, black does not come with this set. I do sit down sometimes and attempt to do a little calligraphy practice um, just for fun. It's nice and relaxing and hopefully I'll get better at it and I can use it on more occasions. So this is actually a little piece of parchment paper which is a traditional medium to put calligraphy on. Here's my A's that I was practicing. And uh, there are rules and there are different styles of calligraphy. I am by no means a calligraphy specialist, so I'm just playing, folks. I dabble. And this, is, this video is for all the other dabblers out there that like to try different things. So here I am trying to actually recall some of the letters and move on in my lessons. And this uh, paper where the angles are already set up for you to be successful in some basic Spencerian calligraphy. Did you know that Spencerian calligraphy was actually invented by a 12-year-old boy? Very interesting. He wanted to mimic nature when he wrote his letters. Beautiful. All right, so those were definitely some fun things to do. And then I wanted to come back and put together a project. I needed a whole bunch of thank you cards for all the sweet things that people did for my birthday, which was recently, and for Christmas. And I have a whole bunch more of these. They were really easy to put together because I used a wash. I'm going to jump in here and show you a little video of me. To make these little cards, I decided to work with the Singing in the Rain stamp from Heartfelt Creations that has this little musical rainbow and bouquet at the tip of it. And I stamped it out in Stazon ink because that seemed to work well with the inks. I'm starting out with the turquoise, which is called turquoise, but it does seem to be fairly blue to me. Um, it lends itself well to sky color. So just a few drips of it and a half inch brush. And I'm going to water it down quite a bit because I want this first coat, there will be two, to be very translucent. I just wanted to fill the area with some color and not have the stamp sitting out there all by itself and uh, tie it into the card as one piece. I'm working right on the card stock which means it is going to bend and warp a little bit because it's not really meant to have this much water put on it, but I just worked with it to bend it back. These aren't meant to be exceptional. I'm making a lot of them, and I thought it would be nice to hand out some thank you cards that were personal to the people who did things for me. So uh, after I laid down this first coat, trying to cover as much of the area as possible. I let it dry and then I came back in with a little bit less water just sort of touching up so that there's some depth to the colors and added a little bit more intensity to the blue. Touched up any spots that I thought really needed attention and really just made the background a little more substantial in doing this. I think it came out okay, it's not perfect, but as I said, I'm making many of these and the fact that they were handmade is really the point here. Taking the time to do this for somebody is a nice thing to do and I think people will know right away that it's handmade, which is good. Now while I was waiting for that to dry, I decided to take some more cardstock, again it's not watercolor paper here, and just create some backwash um, papers so that I could play with them with the inks at another point. I wanted to see what would happen once these dried uh, if I went over them with the ink straight. And I did forget to mention right from the start, you should shake your inks very well before you start working with them. They do, as they sit there, seem to separate. So now I'm just making a little yellow background here. And uh, I've sped it up so that you don't have to watch ink dry. <laughs> and then I come back in with just the ink, no water. And I start to paint the stripes or 
strips of the rainbow. There is a learning curve to this, and my hands are getting shakier as I get older, so it's a little bit hard because when you touch the brush to the paper, the ink is going to come out of the brush and be absorbed by the paper right away. It almost grabs at it. So having an extremely steady hand is very valuable in using these inks. But I will say this, um, I think there's also a learning curve involved and some practice might lend itself to a steadier hand. So uh, I could have gone with the violets and the yellows and the more traditional rainbow colors, but who knows why we pick the colors that we do when we start our projects, right? So after using the red for the stripes, I went over to the flowers and started using the color while it was out to add to the flowers. So now I'm just going to go in with the orange and continue adding the colors. The imperfections and the little bit of white that I've decided to leave makes it look a little bit more handmade. And again, I'm still learning, so. <laughs> And here I am just putting in some more of the flowers while I have the orange color out, making sure that the bouquet has many of the same colors that the stripes and the rainbow have in it. You do need to be really careful to not work wet next to wet. So I went over to the flowers first this time and then decided that the stripes were still not dry enough. Uh, in the area that I was going to start painting the yellow on. So I took my blue ink, which I knew I would have at least one row of blue, and worked with that first, and then came back when I was sure the area above and below were dry and added the yellow. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of the yellow and this aqua and mix them together so that I can create some green because there's no real green, but that's okay. Yellow and green, yellow and blue make green, and uh, wasn't too much trouble to just mix up a little of each of those together and create some green so that I could go back in, add the leaves. I did leave some blank spots, but here it is finished, and uh, that lovely bouquet burst. Now I'm taking my pen and going back to the washes that I did because I need to write thank you on the cards and I could just stamp it but I decided to stick with what I had started and just try to do this by hand but I did take one of the washes and practice um, using my calligraphy pen writing thank you before I headed for the cards. This is one of those things that really in order to become very good at it you have to be consistent and practice at least a few times a week, I would say. If not, if you wanted to become a master, of course, you would be at this every day. But it turned out that I, I was pleased with the way I was able to get thank you onto the paper enough to say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna put this on the card by hand. Got a little better, trying some doohickeys there on the way out. And then I head over to the card and write my thank you in. There is a big learning curve with this pen too. So how often you have to dip, how much pressure you put in, um, how to shape the letters. There's a lot to it, but it's fun to dabble. And then before I was done and cleaned up, I went back to the washes and tried to use a brush to hand letter. This definitely would require a lot more practice on my part. I'm able to with those little help lines that I penciled in with a ruler to get the letters to be somewhat consistent going across straight. I know the modern calligraphy uh, kind of has everything all wavy, but sometimes I think, you know, you get a little practice at doing something straight, plain, aiming for the perfect first, and then you can branch out with a good amount of cards. It did not take that much time for me to create these and it was great to be able to use the inks, really test out all the different colors and just have some fun um, creating something that I could actually use right away. Let's play it around with this 
for a while as you can see I'm already thinking ahead of just washing and putting the colors on top this was a catastrophe my little decor came out okay but had a little incident here so here are just some other playing samples that I did and this one came out okay but it's rather fun it's not professional and I have things to make all kinds of heartfelt creations cards with and I have my practice on my letters and here's my colors one more time in the swatch and I have thank you cards as well as a, a little painting for fun. I hope you enjoyed investigating with me what these inks can do. Um, I'll leave my huckleberryherbs.com link down below if you want the Heartfelt Creations stamp set or anything from Heartfelt Creations that I have in the store. I love them. They're versatile. Shake them up really well before you start and cover your surface. Okay, everybody. I'll leave the links below to the things that go right to the Amazon store. Till next time, this is Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. That was fun. God bless.